There are an overwhelming number of different modifications you can install onto an Ender 3 printer. But one of my favorites, and honestly has the highest impact of all the mods I've put on it, has been the Z-axis extension mod, which can significantly increase the print height of the Ender and give you more flexibility in printing tall objects. The mod is remarkably simple to do with the right tools. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can add an extra 200 or more millimeters of height to your Ender 3 printer. To get started, you're going to need the following things for this mod. Two 2040 V-slot extrusions at the height you want, one T8 lead screw at the same height as your V-slot extrusion, and of course an Ender 3. You will also need some extra 16 to 18 gauge wire to extend the X-axis motor, extruder, and end stop wiring. We will start by unscrewing the beam that holds the two Z-axis extrusions together at the top, which is as simple as removing four screws. Once it's off, we'll be setting the beam and the screws aside in a safe place as we'll be needing those later. Then we will need to remove the screws holding the power supply and the Z-axis motor in place. Again, set those aside to reattach later. To remove the X-axis gantry, the easiest way I've found is to simply keep turning the lead screw up until the gantry reaches the top where it'll simply just pop off. Once the gantry is off and the lead screw is clear, you will want to loosen the top bolt on the coupler. While you're down there, you might as well also remove the bracket that holds the Z-axis end stop and supports the Z-axis beams to the rest of the base. With all the parts removed, you can finally remove the Z-axis beams by unscrewing the two bolts on the underside of the printer. Do this for each side. At this point, the printer should look like this. And now for what was the trickiest part for me. You will need to drill mounting holes for both the Z-axis motor and the power supply. I did this by hand with a power drill. And as you can see, I made a few mistakes. If you have access to it, I would recommend using either a drill press or even milling out the extrusion with a CNC. The power supply holes need to be placed at both 36.75 millimeters and 186.75 millimeters from the end of the extrusion to fit perfectly. And the Z-motor holes need to be approximately 48 millimeters from the end of the extrusion. For the drilling, I used a 3 16 carbide drill bit to drill a 4.7 millimeter hole that is easy enough to thread tap with a 5 millimeter tap. Make sure you get the alignment right. In order to do that, I used a printed jig to great success. I put links to the ones I designed on my website in the description below. Once you have all the holes drilled out, it's a matter of reversing the steps and putting back everything the way you disassembled just with the larger pieces. Start by putting the M5 bolts that connect the base to the Z-axis beams back in their place. Then reattaching the motor to the Z-beam. After that, connecting the new longer lead screw to the coupler. And of course, screwing the X-axis gantry back down into its normal place. Once you've gotten all those parts sorted, then you can screw the 2020 beam that connects the two Z-axis beams together using the four M5 bolts that we had disassembled prior. The next step is to sort out electronics. Since all the wiring is cut perfectly for stock heights, but are far too short for once it's extended, we'll need to splice in some new wire to make it longer. I used thicker than necessary 16 gauge wires for this task, since I did not want to mess with any crimping for the JST connectors for the motors and the end stops, I simply cut the existing wire with lots of slack on either side and then connected each end to the extended piece of wire using alignment splice that I then soldered together. To make this nice and clean, I then used heat shrink tubing to cover and insulate the bare wire connections. Once you get all the wire extended and connected to the printer, you're done. The final thing you'll need to do in order to make this mod work is to add a simple piece of G-code to your slicer's start G-code to disable the software end stops for the Z-axis. By doing this, you can override the distance limits imposed by the firmware without actually having to flash new firmware, something I know that intimidates new folks, myself included. What you want to do is simply add the G-code command M211S0. 
in the starring G-code script section of your preferred slicer, whether that's Cure or Simplify 3D. Every slicer has this place to add scripts to run at the start of a print. And boom! You've just extended your ender and are able to do really tall prints. Now, while you might expect that you need some sort of bracing to prevent excess ringing towards the top, I've actually found, to my surprise, that for a 600mm Z-axis, the surface at the top of the prints are pretty clean and shows almost no sign of vibration in the gantry. That being said, you might have to do some reinforcement on even taller extensions of 1 to 1.5 meters, which is something that I would definitely love to explore in the future. If the idea of drilling precise holes in extrusion or soldering wire extensions is outside the range of your toolset or too intimidating to attempt, but you still want to extend your ender's size, there is a guy online creating and selling pre-drilled kits that is called enderextender.com. I've added a link below with more information about that shop. I hope you found this tutorial useful or educational for your own printing. If you want to see more printer mod videos, feel free to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to help me know what kind of videos I should be making in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.